Okay, today's daf mem chet, and we're going to begin on mem zayin amud bet at the very bottom. We are actually at the second to last line, last word of second to last line. Tane Rabbi Chaya, Rabbi Chaya taught chayrem shebent chumei Shabbat tzarich mechitza. So shel barzel lahapsiko. So what it said was that if you have, here the term cherem is referring to, you have some kind of a body of water. Okay? So Rashi says, I'm sorry, Tosafot explains what does cherem mean here. It's interesting that Rashi doesn't explain, oh he does explain it. He says, Mitzudat dagim umafsik bamayim ben bet techumin shel bet ayarot. Okay? So he says that you have like a fish net that is interrupting in the water between two techumin. Okay, so there are two techumin, there are two borders. In other words, the border of, let's say, one city. If you're walking 2,000 demot out of the city to the east, then you'll get to this, the middle of this pond. And that's where this fishing net is spread out. And if you're coming from the west and you walk up to the other half of the pond, you'll come up and you'll see, uh, you know, you'll, you'll walk halfway through the pond and you'll reach the techum on that side. Okay, but the point is they share this pond so it says you need a mechitza shel barzel, you need something in the middle of it because since both of them are sharing this, uh, this area, this pond, but only half of it is within the tachum of one city and half of it is within the tachum of the other city, so what's to the left, in other words, the city to the, to the east can only go so far to the west and the city to the west can only go so far to the east. So anything that comes from beyond that tachum into their area is no good. But if it's water, it's my Chaim water. Right, the water's moving around. We're going to get to that issue about the Mayim Chaim water. So, but for right now, the problem, as it's, it's, as it's being formulated right now, so you have this, uh, you have this division in the middle of the water. So it says you need a Mechitash shel barzal, you need some kind of a metal wall in between them. Okay? Because why? Because you don't want the water from one side to come into your side. If you're to the east, you can't take the water that was on the west. It'll move into your area and vice versa. Literally a wall. Not, not yeah, a literal wall. wall. Oh, so, Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Hanina laughed at this. He said, what kind of a silly thing is this to put a, a wall in the middle of a pond? So, why is he making fun? Maybe, maybe the reason is because Rebbe Chia here, who's telling you that this pond, basically, that straddles two techumim, half of it is within the techum of city A, and half of it is within the techum of city B, that, that, a court, that this, is being, this issue of having to divide the water in half, so only the water to the right goes to the city on the right, and only the water to the left goes to the city on the left, that's only according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, because Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri was the one who said that ownerless things acquire a makom shivita, right? They, they acquire a place. And therefore, if something from outside, more than 2,000 amot out of your city, the water that was on the other side of the pond flows over into your area, now you can't take it anymore. But that's only according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Okay, so maybe the reason why Rabbi Yossi but Rabbi Hanina was making fun of it was because it was following Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri and he personally held like the rabbis. What do the rabbis say? Anything ownerless, it doesn't have any tichum. You can take it. So, so what that the water was on the left side of the pond before Shabbat and now it's on the right side of the pond and I want to take it and it's within my tichum. So what? It, does, it doesn't have any assigned tichum until I take it. So there, but the problem with that is in Mishum de Savar le Kula Man de Tanei Lechumra Mechayechala. Would he laugh at somebody just because that person disagreed with him? In other words, he holds like the rabbi's position that water in a pond that's ownerless doesn't have any assigned limit on where it's allowed to be transported until you take it out of the water. Until you take it and it's yours. Right? Your limit. It, right, your limit, as long as you can walk up to that place and you can take it. Now it acquires your limit because you acquired it. Okay, that's what he holds. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says, no, we look at everything in the world has an assigned place, including the water in this pond. So if the water in this pond, if the molecules of water that were to the left are now to the right, you're going to have a problem. But why should he make fun of Rabbi, Rabbi Chia for teaching that? That was just his position. It was a machloket. So the answer is that we should. So, uh, so that can't be the reason. But it's because we learned it a bright time. This is what Avram mentioned. That it says that rivers that flow and springs that uh, give water. I don't know what's the word for a spring is. Um, 
giving forth its water, whatever you call it, uh, another word for flowing, novea, I don't know how to translate it differently in English, but the point is that rivers and springs that have water that is m- water in motion, okay, not standing water, that these we say are adam. that means a person can come and take the water, <laughs> flowing streams, right, so let's say a per- and uh, bubbling uh, springs, whatever you want to call it, so if a, if a person comes to a river on Shabbat or Yom Tov, we don't care that when Shabbat started, let's say it comes Shabbat afternoon, when Shabbat started, the water that's here now was upstream, 10 miles upstream. And now it's here. We don't care because since it's a flowing stream, we don't, look, we don't assign a place to each piece of water, so to speak, to each molecule of water. So maybe that's why he made fun of him. He said, you don't have to, sep- you don't have to make a mechitza in the middle of a pond. Water is water. It flows around. Ah, so that's what the Gemara is going to say. Eh, that's exactly what it's going to say. Vedil ma bimikunasin. We're talking about here a pond. A pond is standing water. So therefore, maybe the water that's to the left has to stay to the left. The water that's to the right has to stay to the right. Okay? But, it, but there's not just So water, why should you know? he make fun it's of them? It's not separating just the water. It's separating the, the, the living... Uh, being. Still, yeah. Beings but why would you have to... In other words, why did he laugh at him then? It's not laughable because according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, it's a legitimate issue. It's a legitimate issue. Okay? It's not a flowing stream. So, what he was making fun of was that he said you need an iron mechitza to separate. Why is it that you can't use a reed mat? Why does it have to be iron? You're going to tell me the reason is because reeds, you know, water can penetrate through them. But the real reality is that similarly, but similarly, will the water go through iron? Because let's say you put a mechitza in the pond, you're gonna, it's going to be so secure, you're going to put an industrial type mechitza, it's not going to be that, it's not going to be that secure. It mo- won't necessarily even reach the bottom. You'll have a ten tefach mechitza that you're going to put in the water to divide between the two sides. But the reality is that the water is going to go underneath that mechitza too. So what's the difference, reeds or metal? But maybe what Rabbi Yosef or Rabbi Chanina, I'm sorry, what Rabbi Chia meant, maybe there's no reason to make fun here. Because what Rabbi Chia was saying was, yeah, exactly that. It's impossible. In other words, you, if you have a pond resting on two tichomin, neither side can use it. Because water from the left side is going to flow into the right side, and water from the right side is going to flow to the left side. And by saying you need an iron wall down the middle, he was exaggerating. He was speaking bilishon havai, as they say. He was just saying, oh yeah, you would need a you would need a metal wall going down, meaning it's impossible to actually use the water because there's no way to, to differentiate between the water that's on the left and the water that's on the right in a manner that's going to prevent water from flowing from one side to the other. So therefore, um, there's nothing to make fun of because Rabbi Chia is just saying there's an intractable problem here. But still, Elamishum. So, so why then did Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina laugh at him? Elamishum de kalu de sheikilu hachamim b'mayim. The reason why Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina was making fun of this halacha was because there's a leniency that we have with regard to water, as we've learned earlier in the Masechet and in also in Masechet Shabbat. Kid the Rabbi Tavla, as Rabbi Tavla said, the Ba'aminei Rabbi Tavla merav. Rabbi Tavla es rav mechitzat zuliyama u'shetatir b'churba. Amar le in mechitzat zuliyama teret el b'mayim kalu shekilba chachamim b'mayim. That he said that let's say you had a mechitzat zuliyam. Mechitzat zuliyam means that this is a wall that has ten tefachim in height, but it does. Doesn't reach the ground. Doesn't reach the ground, so you can walk under it. Would that count as a mechita? If you had, like, let's say, a ruin, he's talking about. So the enclosure of the ruin has been broken from the bottom. The walls don't reach the floor anymore. They don't reach the ground anymore. It's mechita tluya. It's like it's hanging in the air. Does that count as a mechita? He said, no. It only works with water. Remember the story about the guy who has the window over the water. You know the picture of the guy who has the window hanging over the water, and so he creates that sort of a box with the four walls going down, so he's able to lower his bucket in between the four walls and take water out of the ocean, right? We had the picture. Right, right. So in that picture, what is that called? Mechitza tluya. The rabbis were lenient to allow a mechitza in the water, even if the mechitza doesn't reach the ground. So what was Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina making fun of? He was saying, Rabbi Chia, we have a halacha, that a mechitza doesn't have to be that significant. In water, we're lenient. We don't require the mechitza to go all the way to the bottom. We don't require it to be made of iron. Even a ten tefach mechitza that's hanging in the water would be enough. It doesn't matter what it's made out of and it doesn't matter if it hits the bottom. It's good enough. So why would you go so far to say that you need an iron wall going down the middle? 
You don't need an iron ball going to the middle. Okay, so that so he agrees that it could be, according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri, that the water on the right side of the pond and the water on the left side of the pond are only accessible to the city on the left side and the city on the right side, respectively. However, he says that you don't need such a sturdy industrial uh, quality mechitza going down the middle to make the distinction. You act as if mechitza was. You act as if, right? You wouldn't have to have the metal a big metal one. Was that because the difference between the metal one and the fishnet? That the fishnet, the water goes back and forth. It's like you have nothing. And right. The, the fishnet would be. And then the metal, there, no water goes uh, on the other side. Right. The fishnet so is totally permeable. Obviously, it's like a so it's mesh. Is, right. right. So that's the difference that he was right. making. Right, right. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Now, but Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Chanina is rejecting that. So we said that a person who goes out of their, out of their uh, to home, right, that's the whole premise here, that's the whole issue here in this, in this uh, Mishnah here that we're talking about. That a person goes outside their tchum and what happens? They have only four amot, right? That's what we learned about. A person who goes out has only four amot. Um, just wanted to find where's the, where was that Mishnah that was on. Um, there's a memhe amud aleph at the bottom that it said that a person who is outside of their tchum, okay. So according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri, if the person fell asleep and woke up, he has two thousand amot in every direction. But according to the Chachamim, since he didn't intend actually to change his Shabbat residence, he just fell asleep in the middle of the wilderness. His Shabbat residence is still defined as his home, and therefore he's outside of his own tchum, and therefore he has only four amot in every direction. Now the Gemara is going to analyze this issue. The Chachamim say he has only four, four amot. So Rabbi Yehuda, Hainu Tanakama. Rabbi Yehuda is the same as the Tanakama. Why is that? Because in the Mishnah Memhe, the, there were several opinions recorded, and the Chachamim said, Ein lo ela arba amot. He has only four amot. And Rabbi Yehuda says, Le'ezer ruach sheyirtze yelech. He has four amot in whatever direction he picks. If he wants to go forward four amot, he wants to go to the left four amot, he wants to go to the right four amot, but that's all he has. So that sounds like the same. The Chachadim are saying he has four amot. Rabbi Eliezer says he has four amot and he's in the middle. Meaning he has two to the right, two to the left, two in front, two behind. But Rabbi Yehuda is saying he, four, he allocates the four. He has to pick a direction and he gets four amot to move. That's it. So that sounds like the same as the Chachamim. The Chachamim said he has four amot. That's it. So what is Rabbi Yehuda different? How is he different from the Chachamim? So the answer is Amar Rabbi Rabbi says Shimon al Shimon Ikabinayu. Eight by eight is the difference between them. In other words, according to the Chachamim, let's say you have four amot. What they mean to say is four amot to each side. Four to the right, four to the left. Four front, four back. North, south, east, west. Okay? In other words, you have eight amot on horizontally and eight amot vertically, so to speak, in, on the map. Only potentially. You're allowed to move. No. And you're outside your tachum. If you go four amot this way... Then that's it. Then, that's then your limit, it. right? That's your limit. So then you can't go back. Yeah, you can because you're. You can. In other words, you're going Let's say your your position is whatever coordinate. So you, you have four. You can go here. You right. can go here. You can go here, and you can go. Why would you pick one? That's it. That defines it. No, no. Oh, okay. No, no. That's Rabbi Yehuda says that. The Chachamim say you have eight. To, it's eight to amot, and you can allocate them. You know, you don't have to allocate them. You're in the middle of them. So you have to the to the east eight. I'm sorry, to the east four, to the west four, to the north four, and to the south four. Okay, that's your square. You have a square. Eight by eight. It's an eight uh, square, um, you know, an eight ama square that's around you, basically. Now, um, okay. So, Tanya uh, Namiachi, we learned in a bright similarly. Yeshlo Shmonal Shmona de Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Meir says, you have eight by eight. Okay, and that's what the Chachamim are saying. Now, everybody agrees, by the way. In other words, this is only with regard to techumin, but to move an object more than four amot, for sure you can't do. So you might have eight amot of wiggle room from west to east, and eight amot of, of room from north to south that you can walk in. You have a square of eight amot, so to speak, that you can that you can move in. But you, if you have objects with you, those objects cannot be moved more than four amot because remember, you're in a Rishut HaRabim. You're in a public domain. So there's a separate issue of moving an object in a public domain for amot. More than four amot. You have a limit of four amot for sure with regard to that. I wanted to see if they had any picture here of, the, uh, of this. Not yet. Okay. We're not up to a picture yet. 
Okay. Now, the uh, now the Gemara gets to a different issue, or a side issue. It says, Where do we get this idea of four amot? Now, according to Rashi and most of the Mefarshim, what it means is where do we get this idea of the four amot of the person who is outside of their tuchum, that they have this four amot allotment to them. Where do we get this idea from? According to Rambam, this is asking on the last halakha. The last halakha was that you can't carry four amot. Right? You have four amot of allotted space, true, but you also, it also said that you can't carry objects for amot. So according to the Rambam, it's asking where do we get this idea for amot from? Okay, but either way, where do we get it from? Kedetan is learned in a brayta. It says, Shivu ishtachtav. It says, when Moshe Rabbeinu told the people not to go out looking for man on Shabbat, he said, Shivu ishtachtav. A person should sit on their, tach, on their tachat. Right? On their bottom. Shivu ishtachtav. A person should sit under himself. What does under himself mean? Under himself means, Kitachtav, like he's underneath. That his body, the average person's body, is three amot. And if he wants to stretch out his hands and feet, that's another amma. So what is the definition of four amot? It's the length of the average person. In other words, that the average person's, if they were, if they were lying on the ground, would be four amot. Whether they're talking Richard Tarabim or Because remember, an amma is about a foot and a half, right? It's from the so same it's like, source? What? So it's about six feet. Whether they're talking about Rishut uh, Rabim or Tehum, it comes from the same Right, place. it comes from the same source. So the Rambam, the Rambam uses this pasuk to mean the four amot that you're allowed to carry things. Right. So you could see that he understood this piece of Talmud as referring to the carrying issue. But the point is, but even if you're looking at a Tehum, also Shavu Yishtachtav, stay in your place, means you can't move out of your place on Shabbat. So if it's referring to Tehum, also place is defined as your height, basically. What is the average person's height? Let's say around six feet. Okay, around four amot. It's true. Okay, if they stretch their arms out and their legs out, the average person is going to reach something around four amot. That's what Rabbi Meir said. Uh, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Gufo shalosh amot ve'ama, k'deh shitul chayfet mitachat margalot ha'v menech tachat merashot Rabbi Yehuda agrees. Three amot for the body of the person, and one ama so that he can move something at his feet to where his head is. In other words, not stretching his arms and feet, legs out, but if there's something, in other words, his place has to be defined, not just by the, the, uh, the space occupied by his body. But if he has something at one end of his body, he has to be able to move it to the other end of his body. Otherwise, how can he function? So therefore, the four amot is because he has to have that extra space that he can have stuff at his, at his feet that can be moved to the top of his body. So, but they both agree that there's four amot. My benayhu, what's the difference? Ika benayhu arba amot mitzum tzamot. The question is how precise it is. Mitzum tzamot, how exact it's going to be. In other words, do we say that it's precisely four amot or maybe a little bit more than four amot? So it would seem like the little bit more than four amot uh, is the uh, is going to be the uh, Rebbe Meir because Rebbe Meir says it's the stretching out of the hands and feet. Right? So that's a little bit more maybe then, uh, that, uh, so that's what Rashi says. That Rabbi Meir says, Le Rabbi Yehuda mitzum tzamot. Rabbi Yehuda says exactly four amot. And Rabbi Meir says, a little bit, a little bit bigger. Okay, so it's a little bit larger than four amot. A tiny bit, maybe a larger measurement of amma because he's thinking of it as a stretching out of the body. Whereas Rabbi Yehuda is thinking of it as a little bit of space at the feet and a little bit of space at the head in order to allow you to have some space for your stuff in addition to just your body. So, now the Gemara says, Amar le Rav Meshashi alebrei. Rav Meshashi said to his son, Ki ayalt lekamed Rav Papa, when you go visit Rav Papa. Please ask him the following question. Ba'eminei arba amot she'amru ba'amma didei yavin adle, o ba'amma shel kodesh yavin adle. Ask him, when we measure the four amot for a person's place on Shabbat, do we measure it by their amma? Or do we measure it by the amma of the kodesh? In other words, their amma would mean from their elbow until the tip of their middle finger. So everyone is different. Or do we do the Amashel Kodesh? Amashel Kodesh means you take six tipachim, six hand breadths of the average person and measure it. It's an objective measurement. It's not particular to you. Both of them. But the hand, the hand No, because the hand breadth, they use the average. They use the average. So they would use the average six of these right. of an average person. And the Amma, they're not using an average. The Amma, they're saying, should we go by your personal Amma? Let's say you're a giant. So if I don't measure by your... And the only yeah. difference is that because they could say the same thing about the, about the Amma, in other words, they don't... Uh, uh, no, they, because they're saying Shel Kodesh, the one that they used in the Beit HaMikdash was based on the average person. Oh, I see. Okay? So, right. that, so they're, they're asking, in your case, what do we base it on? 
you are in the, in the desert and you walked out of the Tukhum. Should I look at what the, what the uh, Amma is of the Beit HaMikdash? Yeah, or should I look at your personal Amma? A fixed one versus... A, An objective uh, one versus per, subjective, right. basically. Yeah. So, the, so he says... If he tells you amot shel kodesh, in other words, if he tells you that it's the objective measurement that we give to a person, og melech habashan What are you going to do about og melech habashan? That's always the example they give. Og is a huge guy, right? He's like eight feet or nine feet or whatever. So he's a very big guy. So what about him? What about a giant? Now, obviously, og melech habashan is not obligated in hilchot shabbat, so it's using it as an example. Right. Okay. So a huge guy. What about him? He's going to, you're going to give him the ama of some uh, average guy. He's not going to be able to move at all. He won't basketball, even fit. Basketball. Right, he won't even fit if you have a basketball player, right? So, so, if you tell me that it's his personal Amma that we determine, then ask him a follow-up question. Then ask him, why was this not mentioned in the Mishnah? Because there was a, there was a Mishnah that we learned, actually, it was quoted um, several Dapim ago, I don't remember exactly when. Uh, I guess it probably tells you on the side here exactly what it was that we saw that last. It was, yeah, it was Daflamid. So that, that Mishnah discusses certain halachot that are particular to the individual. So for example, if a Kohen goes and it says, it tells the Kohen, take a handful of flour. So we don't say, well, it has to be a handful of the average person. No. If the guy has huge hands, it's going to be huge. If, it's, if the guy's tiny hands, it's going to be tiny. No problem. So that's hakol lefi mashu adam. Or when it says a cheek full of liquid that a person will drink on Yom Kippur, okay, that he's not allowed to drink a cheek full. One guy has a cheek that's, you know, really big, and one guy has a cheek that's small. So how do you know? It's, a, it's subjective. So basically what he's asking, Rav Mishashi is telling his son, ask Rav Papa, do we go by an objective ama or subjective? If he tells you objective, we go by the average. Ask him, what about og melech habashan? Who's huge. And if he tells you we go by the individual, then ask him why is it not mentioned in the Mishnah that describes measurements that are subjective. Because there was a Mishnah that described several halachot that go by the individual and are not objectively determined. They're, they're determined by the person. Okay, now, so he goes to him. When he came to Rapapa Amar, he said to him, I daikinan kulahai, lo avitaninan. You know what? If we were so exact about everything, we would, never teach, we would never learn anything. We would never teach anything. In other words, he was making fun of him for asking such a nitpicking question. Okay, he said, you're asking me such an exact question. If we were that careful about everything, we would never move. We would never progress. But I'll answer your question anyway. It's Hold on. Uh, yeah. statement. It sounds like a conservative right? rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why are you being so exact? Everything you need is splitting. Why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're so exact about everything, but all of a sudden, you, why are you asking such a precise question? Um, that's what he says. We would have to answer every little diuk, you know, we would never be able to move. Okay. I don't know why that all of a sudden is becoming a question. But we go by the particular individual's ama. Okay. In other words, if it's Og Melech it goes by his ama. And So uh, then you asked, well, why then is it not listed on the list? of things that are subjectively determined. Why is it not included in that list? The answer is because de la pesikale, because it's not absolute. Mishum nas Because there are, there's a person who might have tiny limbs. So Rashi explains, shegufo benoni, his body is normal, but ba'amato katara, have you seen people that they have the short arms, right? Some people have that. So what if you have a person, right, or, or vice versa, but it's usually the other way. So if you have a person who has a regular body but short arms, and you give him his ama, what is he going to, he's not going to have enough space to sit, <laughs> right? So he says, in that case, we give him the Amash al Kodesh, we give him the objective Amash. So basically, why is it not mentioned in the Mishnah of things that are subjective? Because we take both ends. We say, if the person is a huge guy, then we give him extra. But if the person is a small, has very small arms, and it's going to be disproportionate, then we give him the objective ama, the average ama. We don't impose his personal ama if it won't fit him. Okay, so that's why it's not mentioned in that Mishnah because it goes either way. It could go both ways. Okay, now, so we talked about the three people. One guy has his four, uh, he's sitting to the right, one guy sitting to the left, one guy sitting in the middle. The guy to the right overlaps with the guy in the middle by two amot. The guy in the middle overlaps with the guy on the right, on the left to two, with two amot. But the guy in the right and the guy on the left, they don't overlap at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now, 
the question is, so they, they can share, the guy in the right can share with the guy in the middle, the guy in the middle can share with the guy on the left, but the guy in the right and the guy on the left, they can't share because they are outside of one another's tachum. So now the Gemara says, so they gave an example. What was the example? Rabbi Shimon's example was three chatserot. A chatser on the right, a chatser on the left, a chatser in the middle. They, the chatser on the right opens to the middle one. The chatser on the left opens to the middle one. Each chatser opens to the Rishut HaRabim by itself. So the one on the right made an eruv with the one in the middle. The one on the left made an eruv with the one in the middle. But the one on the right and the one on the left, they didn't make an eruv with one another. So it's the same idea. The one on the right, people who live in the chatzer to the right can carry into the middle chatzer. People who live on the chatzer on the left can carry into the middle. But people who live on the right and they get invited for Shabbat lunch to somebody who lives in the left side chatzer, they can't carry their stuff in there. But they can in the middle. In the middle they can. They can all have a picnic. They can all have a picnic in the middle. Right, exactly. Now, so the, so the question is, What is his point with bringing this analogy to the chatzer? What do we need it for? What do we need it for? Because Rabbi Shimon was actually asking a question on the rabbis. Let's see. So, rabbis, listen. This is the exact same case that we argue about in another case. The rabbis agree in the case of the three guys. Guy in the right, guy in the left, guy in the middle. Where the guy in the middle shares space with the guy in the right, and he shares space with the guy in the left, but the guys on the right and left don't share any space with each other. So the rabbis agree in that case that they can share with the middle guy. Okay, and it's not a problem. So Rabbi Shimon says, we had the exact same case in Chatzerot. And in that case, Rabbi Shimon is the one who says that the Chatzer on the right can go into the Chatzer on, on the middle. And the Chatzer on the left can go in the Chatzer in the middle. But the rabbi said, no, nobody can go in. The rabbi is prohibited in that case of the Chatzerot. They said, you can't go in. Why? Because the guy who comes from the Chatzer on the right... He's, he'll come into the chatzar in the middle. He's going to go into the chatzar on the left. From the middle. From the middle. So you can't let him do it. So why, rabbis, are you arguing with me? If you agree in this case of the three guys, why do you argue with me in the case of the chatzar? And they said to him, So, why don't you argue here? So he says, Because so it says, Why don't you argue here? Why don't you argue here? Why don't you argue here? Why don't you argue The problem is that in our case, what are we talking about? Just three guys. Three guys we can manage. Tell the guy in the right, don't share. Tell the guy in the left, don't share. But when you're dealing with Chatzerot, you're dealing with a population, a big population. You can tell people, oh, don't bring from the right side Chatzer into the left side. But how are you going to control that? It's too many people to control. Somebody's going to end up wandering into the left side Chatzer. That's why the rabbis don't allow it in that case. So now we say, So, the, you know, this is the case again. We're, go, we're revisiting this case of the two courtyards, one to the right, one to the left. The one on the right is, it has an eruv with the middle. The one on the left has an eruv with the middle. But the outer ones don't have an eruv with one another. Okay, so, so the Gemara says, But why don't we say this? Why don't we say, listen, the, the chatzer on the right made an eruv with the chatzer in the middle. Then the chatzer in the middle went ahead and made an eruv with the chatzer on the left. Why don't we just say they're all one happy family now? Right? Because... Right side connected to middle, middle connected to left, so we're good. Through the chain, we're all one. Why does right have to connect to left? Let's say that we're all blended together now. In the middle. It, through the middle, via the middle. In other words, why can't we say that even for me and the right, I can go into the left now? Because I connected myself to the middle chatzer, the chatzer, middle chatzer connected to the left. Why don't we just blend us all together? Like we'll I want to bring an object from here to like a mile from here. I just create a chain of, uh, of people. Chatzer. Why, why can't I? In other words, if I, you have two courtyards. Why can't I carry from the right to the left? Because the middle one is connected to both. So through the intermediary of the middle one, I should just say that the right is also connected to the left. Okay? So, uh, in other words, if you wanted to envision it, imagine this foyer is the middle chatzer. That, out, that foyer is the left side chatzer. The sanctuary is the right side chatzer. Okay? You live in there. He lives in there. So the, and some people live in the middle. So if the people living in the sanctuary made an, made an Arab with the people here, and the people living in there made an Arab with the people living in here, so why don't we just say that we're all one group? Instead of saying that the people who live in there can carry into here, but not into there. And the people who live in there can carry from there into here, but not into there. So now the Gemara says, 
that Amar Rav Yehuda Kigon Shinatena Emtzait Eruva Bazov Eruva Bazov very simply because if you if everybody basically deposited their Eruva Chatzerot in the middle you'd be right because we would just combine the Eruva Chatzerot okay we collected bread from the Chatzer on the right and the Chatzer in the middle that were they were combined we collected bread from the Chatzer on the left and the Chatzer in the middle they were combined and where are we holding them in the middle so what do we say it's all one thing. We're all united now. However, if we... But, but then we're talking about a case where the middle chatzer made a deal with the people on the right and they put their eruv in the right side chatzer. Mm-hmm. And the people in the middle made a deal with the people on the left and they put their bread in the left side chatzer. So the people on the right and left don't share anything. They don't share anything now. So uh, that's what Rav Yudah says. For Rav Sheshet, Amar Rav Sheshet says... Even if they deposited the Eruv bread in the middle, they put it in two different houses. And since it's in two different houses in the middle Chatzar, they don't blend into one. They don't blend into one. And so, therefore, the relationship between the right side Chatzar in the middle and the relationship between the left side Chatzar in the middle are not combined. Because they are represented by bread that's in two different houses. Which means that they are not blended into a mutual relationship. It's two separate relationships. Kiman, who are we following here? Kibet Shammai. That sounds like Rav Sheshet's opinion. Sounds like it follows Bet Shammai. Ditanias will lend in a bright the Chamisha Shigavu at Eruvan. Vin at Nuhu B'Shnei Kelim. That it says if five residents collected an Eruv together for their Chatzer. In order to unite all of them. And they put it in two different Kelim. Bet Shammai Omrim in Eruvan Eruv. Ubeit Hilal Omrim Eruvan Eruv. According to Bet Shammai, this is not a valid Eruv. It has to all be collected in one vessel. In other words, they're saying that this is a roof that you're treating into a shituf, right? It, it sounds like it's more like a... It's a partnership of the different owners of the chater. They want to be able to move. Right. So Stuff from it, one chater. So, so it sounds they're like all like enclosed in one... A roof can only work for you. What Bet Shemai is saying is that a roof can only work for you. It doesn't work like a... a, a a roof has to unite the people. It has to unite the people. So therefore, if it's not all collected in one basket, right. it's not really uniting us, according to Beit Shammai. Beit Hillel says it doesn't matter. As long as everybody contributed to it and they all intended to partner with each other and make one big happy family in the Chatzar, right. fine. I'm, so I'm trying to find out well, what, what's the reasoning behind this. Like why? Behind whom? Behind Beit Shammai? Beit Shammai makes sense because Beit Shammai is saying that you have to combine your, your, how do you combine the residents into one? By creating a collection of food that unites them. So why does Whereas Beit Hillel seems to hold that it's the action of collecting the food that matters not the result. Beit oh, Shammai is saying it all has to be collected in one it. basket. Oh I see. Okay. Literally you have to have all your eggs in one basket right? right, right. Whereas Beit Hillel is saying no 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 as long as you collected it it doesn't matter. So that would seem to be the question of action versus results. Yeah. Is it the combined food that you have or is it the action? Right. Okay, now, however, so, so, but wait a second, but that seems like Rav Sheshit is holding like Beit Shammai then. Because Rav Sheshit is saying that if you have some of the bread in one house and some of the bread in another house, so we don't combine. We don't combine the chatzar on the right and the left. Because the people who had, the, ha- had the, br- the collection of bread that united the middle chatzar with the right side chatzar was deposited in house number one. That's one eruv. The, the bread that was collected from the left side chatzar and the middle chatzar to con- connect them was deposited in house number two. But never the twain shall meet. They're not connected with each other. So there's no combination of a relationship of the three of them. But that seems to follow Beit Shammai. Afilu tema Beit Nope, even Beit would agree. Ad kan lo ka'amre Beit Hillel atam ela bishne kelim bebayit echad. Aval bishne batim lo. Even Beit would agree it has to be in one house. Okay, so Beit Hillel is saying that, in other words, it's not that Beit Hillel is saying the fact that you collected the bread. That was the Hava Amina, that was what we thought. That Beit Hillel doesn't care where the bread is placed. So you could put it in two different houses and it would be just as good. He says, no, that's not true. Even Beit Hillel says it has to be in one house. The difference between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel is Beit Beit Shammai says it has to be in one basket. Beit Hillel says as long as it's in one house, that's collected. Okay? But, sti- right. So, so th- yeah, it's, a, it's a less, less of a difference than we thought. So, therefore, what is the point? Rav Sheshit is saying that if these two Eruvin were contracted, were placed in two different houses, even if both houses are in the middle Chatzer, it will not unite the right and left Chatzerot. 
Okay, now we say like this. Amar le Rav Achabre de Rav Avya. Rav Achabre de Rav Avya said to Rav Ashi, the Rav Yudah Kashe, the Rav Sheshit Kashe, I have a problem with both of these explanations. Because remember, Rav Yehuda said that the problem was, why, do, why don't right and left connect through the middle? Why doesn't the middle facilitate a treaty between right and left, so to speak? Because there's an, the Eruv is deposited in the right side Chatzar. The Eruv is deposited in the left side Chatzar. There's nothing in the middle. And Rav Sheshit says, no, it is in the middle. It's just in two different houses. Both are agreeing that, it would be, that if it were in the middle and it were in one house that everybody would be one happy family. The right and the left would be connected, okay? But he says, I have a problem with both of these explanations. Why? Because. The Rav Sheshet, Kasher, Rav Sheshet is a problem. I'm sorry, the Rav Yehuda, Kasher, Rav Yehuda is a problem. The Amar Kigon Shnatna Emtsait Eruvah Bazov, Eruvah Bazov. He says, V'kevan de Eruva Emtsait Bahadeh Chitzona Havya Lechada V'chi Adra Va'arva Bahadeh Idach Shalichuta Avda Why can't we just say like this? Why do we have to be absolute? Why can't we just say the middle chatzer, whichever chatzer the middle one makes an eruv with first, is the base. So let's say the middle chatzer makes an eruv with the right side chatzer. Okay? <laughs> now the middle chatzer goes and they want to make an eruv with the left side chatzer. Why don't we just say they're representing everybody? They already have a treaty with the right side and now they're making a treaty with the left side. So why don't we aggregate it, in other words? Why do we say that these are two totally separate phenomena? Why don't we say the right side and the middle are now connected? Once the right side and the middle are connected, then when the middle makes its eruv with the left side, even if it places the food in the left side, it doesn't matter. It's representing both parties. Because it already has a relationship with the right side. Why don't we look at it as aggregating, not as making a separate uh, connection? That's a problem with Rav Yehuda. Well, the Rav Sheshet, and with Rav Sheshet's opinion that it has to do with how many houses you use in the middle, Kashya, it's a problem too. To have a Hamisha Shishiruyin, Bachatzerachat, Bishachachai Hachad Mehen, Velo Erev, the Asrei Ahadadeh. Because it should be even worse, because Rav Sheshet is saying that basically if these two Chatzerot, the people on the left deposit their, chat, their Eruv in one house in the middle, the people on the right deposit their Eruv in another house in the middle, right? So they're not allowed though to carry, in other words, they each have an independent relationship with the middle. They don't, we don't blend their relationships together and say that the right and the left now have a relationship. We're not going to go that far. So if that's the case, though, it should be like a situation where you have five people living in a chatzer, and out of the five, only four participated in the eruv, and one was out. And that prevents everybody from carrying in the chatzer. Because basically, once you have division set up, once you have exclusion set up, it ruins everything. So if we're looking at these three groups as all sharing one area. And hype, in other words, because if we're looking at these three groups as really they all share one area and could have been all united, right? They could have all been united. But instead, the people on the right only made an Eruv with the people in the middle. The people on the left only made an Eruv with the people in the middle, but not with one another. So it's just like having one, one Chatzar where two people say, you know what, we don't want to participate in your Eruv. In other words, they're not joining together. The people on the right and the people on the left are not joining with one another. Right, they're not all joining together. Right. So since there are holdouts, whenever there are holdouts, it always ruins it for everybody. Right. It ruins it for everybody. So why is it that the people on the right can carry into the middle? Why is it that the people on the left can carry into the middle? We should say that if there are holdouts in the, in the uh, union here, that nobody can carry. Because well, there are holdouts, because the people on the right could have been united with the people on the left, and they said no. The people on the left could have been united with the people on the right. They said, no, we only want to unite with the people in the middle. So I don't understand the point because, I mean, that, that is the point. In other words... No, because Rav Sheshit is middle. saying that still the people on the right could carry into the middle. The people on the right, left so could the carry into the middle. The issue is who is holding out because depending on who is holding if you're in the middle and you hold out, then you, then you, you mess it up for everybody. But if you're on the edge and you But hold the point out, is that since everybody could have been in one big eruv, they could have been because we see that the right and the left, they could have combined together in the middle and made one big eruv for all three chatzerot, and they didn't do that. Right. So it's like they are separating, it's like having five people in one chatzer, where two of them say, well, we don't want to be part of it. We don't want to join in the eruv, and therefore we're going to hold everybody else back from carrying because we won't unite with you. If you have a chatzer where there are five people living, everybody in that chatzer has to agree to the eruv in order for it to work. Right. So here, if we have three chatzerot that hypothetically could have been combined into one, 
but the people on the right only join with the people in the middle. And the people on the left only join with the people on the middle. So they're basically the people on the, the right, the people, people on the like left. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah the they're... same people. Okay. But the people on the right are refusing to join with the people on the left ah, and vice versa. Okay, so okay. then it's like having five people who refuse, part, part of whom refuse or... to be part of the Eruv. I see. Okay, so why doesn't it prevent everybody from carrying that? Right. So, okay, so that's a problem with that answer. So the Gemara says, Amarli Ravashi Ravashi says, Lala Rav Yudah Kasheva, Lala Rav Shishir Kasheva. Neither of these are really problematic, my son, don't worry. Because, Lala Rav Yudah La Kasheva, no problem for Rav Yudah, why not? Because, Kevan de Erev Allah Imtsa'it Bahde Chitsona. Ushtaim Chitsonot Bahde Adade Lo Erevu, Galia Date De Bahan Nichale. Uvaha La Nichale. You asked the question on Rav Yudah, why isn't it that we, why don't we aggregate? Why don't we say the right joins with the, the middle? Then the middle joins with the left. By doing that, they're adding on, in other words, they're making a chain. They made a chain to the right, now they're connecting it to the left. Why don't we see it all as one? So the answer is no, because since the people on the right, Davka, specifically only wanted to make their Eru with the people on the middle, and the people on the left, Davka, only wanted to make their connection with the people in the middle, that means they're excluding, excluding each other. So that's why we don't aggregate them. We don't say that, there's a, that we combine the two Eruvin into one. Because they specifically said, no, we only want the people in the middle. And they specifically said, no, we only want the people in the middle. Right. Okay, now, and with regard to Rav Sheshit, you asked the opposite question, which is, why doesn't the fact that the people on the left and the people on the right are not united hold everyone back from using the chatzer? Why doesn't it ruin it for everybody? Okay? Why would it? Because in a normal chatzer, if two people decide that they don't want to participate with the rest of the group, it ruins it for everybody. Right, but, that's, but, 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 it, but it doesn't ruin it for the, the one right next to them. It, but yeah, but the point is that since this area, three chatzerot, could hypothetically be united into one, yeah. we're looking at them as all together. And, and, and dissenters even, and people dissenting and saying we don't want to be part. We, so what you're saying is that okay, so I, I want to make a roof with with uh, with Abraham, and and then behind Abraham there I, there is uh, you know someone else. You have a so you have a courtyard a that you all share. Right. So if I make a roof with Abraham and, and the, the third one, guy says I don't want to be, I don't want to. Then I he ruins, it. If, he ruins it. if he's in your chazer, he ruins it. Yep. If if he's in your chazer, he ruins it. Because they all have to if, if, if we're talking about three because it has to be unity it has to be unity it has to be unity oh because it's all part of it has to be unity so it's all part of one thing yeah so that so 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 Rav Sheshed what's the issue Ola Rav Sheshed Lakasha Im Amru Diorin Lakel Yomru Diorin Lachmir we're saying that these people are all considered to be together Lakel for leniency are we saying it Lachmir so what does Rashi say? Shel zo bazo al yedei eruv la kela tiran yachad yom rosh eruv mevi adiurin letocha kedei lezora lea halo dairei mamash begava. Okay, so he says that basically, if the person is, uh, you know, is, um, in other words, when it comes to who we count as living together, we try to lean it towards the direction of leniency, not towards the direction of. Stringency. So in this case, we're saying they all live together in one area because we want to enable them to create a chat, to create one a, a unity. But we're not saying that they all live together for the purpose of isur, in order to prevent them. Okay. Right, right. Now you might say, well, that should go together. But they're saying that no, we're structuring it that we are calling them all residents of the same area for positive things. In other words, to enable them to unite. <laughs> Okay? That's what we're trying to say. But we're not saying that for purposes of preventing an interference, they all live together. So if the people on the right want to dissent, we're not going to say that holds everybody else back in the other two Hatserot. We're not going to go that far. Okay, so that's the answer. Now, Amar Rav Yudah, Amar Rav, Rav Yudah said Neirav. From a Gezerah anyway, right? So they can, they can form that's a right, that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. It's, a it's, a it's, it's a rabbinic thing. It's a rabbinic thing. So they can go... They can't they say can't that. Say right, that. they were allowed to do that, right. Okay. So, now we say, Amar Rav Yudah, Amar Rav, Rav Yudah said that Rav said, Zod Devei Rabbi Shimon. All of this is the words of the rabbis. Aval Chachamim, Amrim Rishut, Achat, Mishameshet, the Shtei Rishuyot. Aval Lo Shtei Rishuyot, Mishameshot, the Rishut Achat. That according to the rabbis, it only works unidirectionally. Meaning, we've been saying so far that if the people on the right make an Eruv with the people in the middle, 
the people on the left make a neighborhood with the people in the middle. So the people in the middle and the people on the right have a, a mutual relationship. They can go back, they can carry things back and forth between the two. The people in the middle and the people on the left have a mutual relationship. But that's only according to Rabbi Shimon. According to the rabbis, it doesn't work like that. According to the rabbis, if the people on the right and the people in the middle have a relationship, and the people on the left and the people in the middle have a relationship that's separate, then it only works one way. People on the right can bring into the middle, and they can bring from the middle their stuff in the middle back to the right. But the people in the middle cannot. They can't bring their stuff into the right and back. And similarly, the people on the left, they can bring their stuff into the middle and back. But the people in the middle cannot bring stuff from the middle to the left and back. Why? Because he says, en, he says, Lo rishut They can't have two different uh, eruvin going on simultaneously with two different uh, places. Because otherwise it can go around forever. Right, because the people on the right have only one eruv. They have right. only an eruv with the people in the middle. That's right. fine. The people on the left have only one eruv. But the people in the middle have two. Right. That you can't tell. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a combining, it's not a chain. Right, it's, it's not a chain. Combine, but it's not so a for the middle people, they're stuck because they can't have their cake and eat it too. They can't say, well, we're eruved with the people on the right and then the left. They can't do that. The people on the right only have one. People on the left only have one. So that's what the Chachamim say. And that would also prevent the, out, the, the left and the right from... They definitely can't cross the over, that's for sure. Using the middle to cross over. They can't cross over. Well, they can walk through it. The issue here is only moving right. objects. Right. Yeah, it's only moving objects. So, Ki Amrita Kamei Shmuel, when it was stated before Shmuel, Amar Ali said to me, Apzo Divrei Rabbi Shimon, Aval Chachamim Omrim Shiloshtan Asurot, that Shmuel said, no, I'm going to go even further. Even Rabbi Shimon agrees that it's only unidirectional. In other words, even Rabbi Shimon says that, you ca- that the people in the middle cannot carry back and forth when they have two eruvin, one with the people on the right and one with the people on the left. What's the machloket between Rabbi Shimon and, Rabbi- and the Chachamim? The Chachamim say nobody can do anything in this case. They say nobody can do anything. Because they, everyone's got a problem. Right, because you got two different, because right people are excluding left, left people are excluding right, and they're sharing a, a space in the middle. Nobody can do anything. So there's two interpretations here. One interpretation says that Rabbi Shimon says that when you have this situation of the middle having a relationship with the left and having with the right, but it not being mutual, so that Rabbi Shimon says the people in the middle and the people on the right can go back and forth with their stuff. The people in the middle and the people on the left can go back and forth with their stuff, no problem. But the Chachamim say no. The people on the right can go back and forth. The people on the left can go back and forth. But the people on the middle, they can't move. They can't move stuff either way. Okay. No. Now, according to Shmuel's interpretation, though, no. That thing is actually what Rabbi Shimon holds. Rabbi Shimon is the one that says the people on the right can go back and forth. And the people on the left can go back and forth. The people on the middle can't move. The Chachamim say nobody can go back and forth at all. Okay? So that, that, that's the way that Shmuel interprets it. And... Tanya Rabbi Tanya Kibatid Rabbi Yehuda Ali B'Di Shmuel. There is actually a brayta that supports this, the, that supports the uh, the first inter, uh, interpretation. I'm sorry, no, no, the second interpretation. How so? The second interpretation is supported because Amar Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon said, "Lamad davar domel leshalosh chatzirot abtuchot zol azo abtuchot dershut rabim erbush taim bima emtzaid zom avi amitoch beita veochelat vezom avi amitoch beita veochelat zom achazeret mot." That Rabbi Shimon says, in this case, where you have the three chatserot that have a relationship, the right has a relationship with the middle, the left has a relationship with the middle, he says, people from the right can bring stuff from their house into the middle, eat it, and bring it back, and bring the leftovers back. People from the left side can bring stuff into the middle, eat it, and take it back to their house. But implying that people in the middle can't do anything. They can't bring stuff into the left or the right. But the Chachamim say, nobody can do anything. Even the people on the right can't move into the middle, move stuff into the middle. Even the people on the left can't move stuff into the middle because the entire three Chatserot have to all be unified into one entity in order for any transfer of objects to take place according to the Chachamim. Is that a 